Hey, D Dykstra here again with another great math video for you. Check it out, Ray. Nay, Descartes' rule of signs. Yes. When do we use Descartes' rule of signs? Well, in the previous video, we talked about how we can use the rational zero theorem to help create a list of possible zeros. Maybe that's because either one, the, the function is getting more difficult, to cha uh, more challenging to factor out, and so we have to be a little more creative. So we have these other tools now that we can go to, uh, like the rational zero theorem. We also have um, factor by grouping, and when those things don't really work, we have to find some alternatives. But then, after we're done with the rational zero theorem, we have a list, could be quite lengthy, of positive and negative options. And so what we have to do is we need another tool to narrow down the number of options that we have. And so Descartes, uh, came up with a great idea, and that is his change of signs rule. So let's see what it is. All right, so here are the basics, okay? What it does is it, why do we use it? Well, it helps narrow down the possible positive or negative zeros. For instance, when I go to synthetic division from the rational zero theorem, what I'm doing is I'm trying different options uh, to, uh, as x values. Will that x create a zero at the end uh, in f of x? So, if it does, I know it's a zero. Now, I could try a list of positive possibilities. Then I could try another list of negatives. But let's say the function only says, well, you only have one negative. Well, once I find that negative, there's no use in looking for other negative options because I've already found it. Now, you could spin your wheels doing this over and over and again, but using Descartes' rule of signs, it really helps uh, narrow down those options. So. We have f of x. Now, I, I went to the PQ method again. Uh, you'll see this in other notation. This is the leading coefficient of the uh, leading term, where p is the leading coefficient of the leading term as nth, the nth value is the highest value, all the way down to q. And so what we do is, and you'll be, there's a, a we'll go through the examples, but for the positive options, we're going to keep the polynomial as is, okay? We're going to just look at it for face value, and we're going to count the number of sign changes. So a sign change would be if I'm starting at a positive and I go to another positive, there's no sign change there. So that sign is just in between each term. If I go from a positive to a negative, now there's a sign change in between there. So let, we'll look and see how that works. Now, for my negative options, so for my positive options here, okay, positive options, I'm going to keep the polynomial as is. I'm not going to do anything to it. When I look for negative options, these negative options, what I'm going to do is I'm going to input negative 1, negative 1, for all the x's. And what I'll do is I, I'll look at that negative 1 in a cube, let's say, or in a square, x squared. And does that change materially the, the sign that it already has? If it does, I'm going to use the new sign, and then I'm going to recount to see how many times the, the changes uh, take place. So if a sign will change, then count the changes. All right, so let's, let's look at a, a, an example. I've got three different examples here for us today. And um, so example number one, f of x is x cubed plus 2x squared, plus 5x, plus 4. And so I'm going to look at the positive case first. Okay, so the positive case, remember, was we keep the polynomial as is. And I look, and so, okay, well, here's a positive, right? So from there to there, there's no change. From this positive to that positive, no change. From this sign to that sign, no change. So in this case, in the positive case, there are no positive changes, so that means there are no positive factors or x values. X values. In other words, when I go to do synthetic division, I only have to rely on negatives. And let's see what that is. Now, it's a cubic, so we can expect up to at least three possible x values, right? Sometimes it bounces, so we might get a bouncer. Um, 
with a multiplicity issue. All right, so now in the negative case, again, what I'm going to do is switch sides over here. I'm going to put in a negative 1 for all these x's. So this will be negative 1 cubed. And this will be negative 1 squared, negative 1 there. And there's no negative, negative uh, there's no x value there. So let's see. x cubed, if I put a negative 1, I will get a negative. Right? I'll get a negative sign out of that. Because a negative times a negative is positive, times one more negative is a negative result. Now this time, negative 1 squared, well, that's a positive. Right? So this sign stays positive. That's a positive. Now this one, negative 1 for this. That's going to change this to a negative 5. So I'll get a negative value there. And this one obviously stays the same. So again, now what I do is I count negative to positive. One sign change, right? Positive to negative. One sign change. Negative to positive, one sign change. And so ne there are three possible negative x values. So three negative x values. All right? That's how it works. And in this case, if I were to develop that PQ list as my Q over, or my P over Q, or Q over P, then I would figure out that this is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. And so I could spin my wheels trying to do positive values in synthetic division. I wouldn't need to do that. All right? So here we go. Let's look at another example. This one, x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. All right, let's look at the positive case. Positive case. So this has a positive in front of it, right? So we're going to go positive to positive. There's no sign change. But now look, we go from positive to negative. That's one sign change. Remember, the positive case, we leave it as is. We're not trying to change the values at all. We're just looking at it as is. Then we go negative to negative. That's a zero change. So that means there's one positive option. One positive option. And we'll use that from our list, our PQ list. Let's look at the negative case. So again, I'm going to put in negative 1. Negative 1 cubed. Negative 1 squared. Negative 1 there. And that constant doesn't have anything. So. What's going to happen if I put a negative 1 in this cubic? That's right, I'll get a negative out. Then negative 1 squared is going to stay positive. Negative 1, oh, there's a negative, right? So negative 1 times 4, negative 4 would be a positive 4, so I put a positive there. And this one is going to stay negative because there's a constant and I'm not multiplying it by anything. So let's look. I go negative to positive, one sign change. Positive to positive, no sign change. Positive to negative, one sign change. So there's two possible negative options. Now, each time we do this, we should theoretically add up to the highest value of our exponent, 3. Well, look. In the first example, we found three. They were all negative. In the second example, we found one positive option, and we found two, again, adding up to three. All right, let's look at our final example. We looked at this one before when we did our PQ test here, and so um, I brought this back to us. Uh, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. So of our possible Q values, we found it was plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, 3, and 6. And then Q values, so uh, our P values from the coefficient are positive 1 and positive 2. Now, if we were to count how many we have, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, but 4 times 2 is 8 because 8 is the number of positive and negatives. If we were to list them all out, we'd have positive.
Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 6. That's 4. Negative 1 through negative 6. That's 4 more. Now we have to include the fractions. Fractions would be 1 half, right? Plus or minus. That's 2 more. 2 over 2 is 1. 3 halves. Plus or minus 3 halves. There's another couple options there. So the list gets long. So what we really want to do is figure out how many positives and negatives we really can deal with. So let's look at the positive case again. That's where we keep these the same. This again has a positive out front. So we go positive to negative. One sign change. We keep everything the same, remember, with the positive. Negative to negative. No sign change. Negative to positive. One sign change. So when we're done, we should see that there are a possibility of two positive options. Negative case. We plug in negative 1 again. Negative 1 cubed. Negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times x and the constant gets the same thing. So that's all right. So negative 1 cubed, that's going to make this a negative. Right now it's a positive. It's going to change it to a negative. Negative 1 squared, well, that's not going to change it, so that'll remain negative. Negative 1 in for x, if I multiply that by a negative 11, I get a positive. And then the 6 keeps its positive as well. So if we notice, negative to negative, no sign change. Negative to positive, one sign change. Positive to positive, no sign change. So there's one possible negative case. Now, from the other video, I, we determined that the real zeros were negative 2, positive 1 half, and 3. And you can use synthetic to division to try that out. But if you'll notice, look, hey, check it out. One negative case, we have one negative zero. We have two positive options. Look, positive 1 half, yep, and positive 3, yep, and so it checks out. Descartes, brilliant guy, right? I mean, you know, hanging out, just doing math one day, figures that there must be something to do with the sign change. So anyway, that has been another uh, quite mathy video for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And Descartes, rule of signs. Dijkstra, out. See ya. Peace.